Hello and welcome everybody to today's edition of Breaking News Business here at Mexico News Network. I'm your host Elliot Bullman. Remember to follow us on all our social networks and to catch us every day by logging onto our website mexiconewsnetwork.com for relevant stories and news. Let's start with today's show. According to a study by the Talent Service Center, SIDAT, Recognized in 2013 by the World Council for Gifted and Talented Children as the National Center for Gifted Children of Mexico, the country has 6,000 cases of gifted children and currently the center has 300 active cases. In Mexico, there are a lot of gifted children. However, 95 out of 100 are not discovered. And the reason for that is because twice exceptional learners are often confused with conditions such as autism, attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity, or Asperger syndrome. Andrew Almasananaya, director of research at the Department of Psychology at SEDAT, announced that of the 300 active cases, only 25% are female. And that's because they're better at adapting with the environment and prefer to feel accepted ahead of being noted for their skills. An interesting fact is that usually the IQ scores obtained from girls are much higher than boys. Instead of 130 or 140 values from which it's considered to be gifted, they reach up to 180 or even 190 IQ, which means they're extremely gifted. Some early tip-offs that your child could be a prodigy include extraordinary talent in a particular area such as math, drawing, verbal communication or music. It's important to detect gifted children early so that they receive greater opportunities for development. If a gifted child has been overlooked and has lost the motivation to learn, he or she may end up not doing so well in school, although achievement test scores usually remain high. 14-year-old Luis Roberto Ramirez of Zamora, Mexico has an IQ comparable to that of Albert Einstein and is headed to Harvard to study quantum physics and engineering. The multi-talented Ramirez taught himself English at the age of five and swiftly moved on to learning French and Chinese. But it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows for this boy genius. His parents discovered Ramirez's intellectual ability when he was nine. However, they noticed he had problems relating to his peers and that his interests didn't correspond to those kids of his age. Ramirez has caught the attention of Mexican policy makers who are nervous about losing one of the country's biggest minds to a foreign university. According to the theory developed by Luis Terman, the per capita income of a population is related to the average intelligence of a country, and this intelligence depends heavily on the population of gifted people. Almazan finished by saying that for every thousand gifted children, the economic impact generated in their adulthood is equivalent to one million people at an economically active age. So if we find 10,000 gifted children and correctly channel them, they would have the impact of 10 million Mexicans. In other headlines, with the growth of the global aerospace sector, the governor of the state of Querétaro, Francisco Dominguez Servien, and the CEO of the company Safran, Felipe Petit Collin, signed an understanding letter during the second day of the International Aeronautic Fair in Farnborough, England. The aim of this letter is to start a strategic alliance which can result in the manufacture of space satellites in Querétaro. Dominguez Servien, during his working tour in Europe, met with managers of companies such as Canadian Bombardier and from Safran Group, who are specialists in the production and development of aerospace technology. Operating worldwide, Safran has over 70,000 employees and posted sales in 2015 of 17.4 billion euros. Safran already has five plants operating in Querétaro, and one more is now underway. Safran is the main employer in the Mexican aerospace industry with almost 6,000 workers, out of which 500 work in Querétaro. At the new plant, which is expected to start production in 2017, fan blades for the new generation LEAP, or Leading Edge Aviation Propulsion Motor, will be fabricated, which will be used by the new generation of Airbus A320neo, Boeing 737 MAX and Comac C919 airplanes. Safran has been working in Mexico for 20 years in the aerospace, defense and security markets with two main goals, to provide local support for its clients along the American continent and to increase their participation in the region's market. Carreta was chosen as the operational headquarters because of its favorable geographic location, logistical connectivity, the state's safety and its specialized human resources. Moving on, as everyone knows, there are two candidates running for US presidential elections this November. On one hand, you have a leader who wants to give Mexicans the opportunity to have full US citizenship. And on the other, you have a candidate who's campaigning against it. 
Not only that, but he wants to have them deported and kept out of the country altogether by building a 3,000 kilometer long wall. Here's where it all gets interesting. The economic ramifications of this, considering Mexico has no less than 57 border ports of entry, where billions of dollars in merchandise go through on a daily basis, a wall, per se, would be commercially impossible. Or, as US Ambassador Roberto Jacobson would say, unfeasible, stating that USA and Mexico share a strong relationship thanks to the NAFTA agreement. Donald Trump's plan is to force Mexico to pay for a border wall by blocking money transfers and cancelling visas unless Mexico makes a one-time payment of $5 to $10 billion to the US. Mexico's president, Peña Nieto, as well as the country's past leaders have said the country won't pay for Trump's wall. Economists also say there are legal and economic reasons why Trump's plan just won't work. Setting aside for a moment, who would pay for the wall? The main question on everyone's mind is, how much would this wall actually cost? Well, there are several points to consider. First of all, finding a way to keep Ill illegal immigrants out is not going to be cheap. The Secure Fence Act, back in Bush's administration in 2006, called for the construction of a 1,100 kilometer fence, and 10 years later, that fence is 50 kilometers short of completion. Back then, the cost was estimated to be $2.4 billion for roughly one third of the entire border. And that's just the easiest and less costly areas to fence, according to migration experts. The Government Accountability Office reported back in 2009, the cost to build 1.6 kilometers of fencing would be no less than $2.8 million and $3.9 million at its highest. And this is just a fence we're talking about. So what about a border wall? Well, Mark Rosenblum, Deputy Director of the U.S. Immigration Policy Program at the Migration Policy Institute, says the cost for a border wall could be as high as $16 million per 1.6 kilometers. That's a million dollars for every 100 meters of wall. The total cost for completion could range between 15 to $25 billion. And you know what would push the cost even higher? they would have to pay for private land acquisitions. And that's without throwing into the mix the maintenance cost for the wall, which could be as high as $750 million a year. And who's going to pay for that? The US government, of course. That's not to mention adding personnel, plus you have to install security cameras throughout. Because like Rosenblum puts it, a fence is useless without a camera to tell you when someone has climbed over it. At the end of the day, this is just an estimate, and most of it is from fences, which is reality nowadays. And according to Trump, he wants a wall. We sometimes forget that underneath all the things that he does, the talking, the hair, the TV shows, he does know how to build, right? So maybe he could just do it himself. All in all, Donald, it's just another brick in the wall for you. And finally, in economics, the Mexican peso increased 0.75% to 18.52 from 18.38 in the previous trading session. The peso changed up 1.02% during the last week, down 1.17% during the last month, and was up 15.64% during the last year. Mexico's IPC index increased 0.52% to 46,932 from 46,689 in the previous trading session. Mexico's IPC index changed up 1.7% during the last week and up 3.59% during the last month and was up 2.99% during the last year. That was all for today. Thank you for staying with us. I'm your host, Elliot Bullman. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Log on to www.mexiconewsnetwork.com for more information on Mexico and the world. Until next time.